we kicked things off with the Lucha Brothers versus Private Party, who had a decent match. There were some flops in there. Cassidy missed the top rope at one point, but he saved it with catching the middle rope to springboard. Um, great match. Good match. No complaints here except for the flops, I guess. Lucha Brothers go over. They, uh, they have proven themselves to be a phenomenal team, one of, if not the greatest tag team currently in the world, uh, certainly in the roster with AEW. Then we jump ahead to the Dark Order versus SCU. Good match for uh, both of them did fairly well. Honestly, was it the best match of the show? No, it wasn't, but it was still a pretty decent match. Uh, it The shine kind of got taken away when Jericho walked out with the inner circle. I guess for this episode of Dynamite, Jericho was just a spectator with tickets. He walks out there and he looks like a star. He looks like uh, the king of the castle. He's walking out there and he just looks like he's just high on his own supply, man. The guy looked, the guy looked good. Walks up to a VIP box and he spends the remainder of the show just booing the baby faces and cheering on the heels as he should. So SCU goes over. So now we have the Lucha Brothers versus SCU for the AEW Tag Team Championships, which should be a stellar match. Then we jump ahead to Cody. Cody goes out there and he, I guess, is going to cut a promo. We don't know because he got interrupted by the great Chris Jericho and the Inner Circle. I'm loving these guys, man. These guys are awesome. They were up there drinking champagne, a little bit of the bubbly. I mean, Chris Jericho can make anything, you know, work, man. He he will put anything over. The dude put over a list. Now he's putting over champagne. So he's up there. He's talking crap. At one point, he calls Cody a millennial. Cody responds with, hey, listen, we're not at that other company anymore. Taking shots at WWE, of course. Cody says, I will go up there and I will fight you. Well, Jericho says, well, good luck with that. There's four of us and only one of you. At which point, the music hits and out comes Cody's big brother, Dustin Rhodes, formerly known as Gold Dust, uh, MJF, who currently is Cody's best friend, and DDP, who trains Cody. So now you got four versus four, um, a fight takes place they start fighting in the concession stands all hell breaks loose at one point you look at chris jericho's face and the dude looks like he's ready to kill over and die i mean his face is purple he did not look good i was worried for the guy it wasn't like red like he was mad it was purple like he was about to have a stroke so after that we jump over to uh, the young bucks versus the best friends the young bucks go over and they accept santana and ortiz's challenge now what uh, was interesting about this match uh, besides it was awesome because the young bucks were in it was um orange cassidy was in it i like orange cassidy i like his swag i like his style something about him just calm collective you know he's he's he's, he's always doing the uh, very minimal he's always putting in very minimal effort but he's getting over I, I don't know what it is but he gets over i like him he intervenes a few times but ultimately the young bucks go over finally we go to the main event which is john moxley versus Pac. um recently with aew well since its inception there have been time limits to matches which is good i think that's good because it 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 gives you out sometimes and in this case you had John Moxley, who has been put over very, very strong. And you have Pac, who has been um, put over very strong as well. Currently, Pac is undefeated in singles matches. I know he technically lost because John Moxley walked out on him when they were tag teams against the Young Bucks, I believe. No, it wasn't the Young Bucks. It was someone else. But um, anyway, that's what started the feud, I guess, between these two guys was John Moxley versus Pac. Um, Moxley walked out on Pac before he DDT'd him. And here we are. We're having a match. So the time runs out. Uh, no clear winner. Uh, the match ends. And both John Moxley and Pac are still over. I mean, they're still... No, they didn't lose. Pac is still undefeated. And John Moxley is still book strong. Terrific show. I really like the two-hour concept. 
it, it just doesn't drag on. There's no cheesy stuff in between that just make you roll your eyes. There's just, it's just very consistent, man. It's it's like when you have a great meal, you know, you, you are left satisfied. It's not too much. It's not too little. You're still not hungry and you're not too full. It's just right. You feel good. It was, it was just good substance. It's consistent week after week. The storylines are not too complex. I'm not saying that AEW is, um, you know, like TV that you can just be playing in the background. You don't have to pay attention. You have to pay attention, but still, it, it requires very little to keep up with the product. Terrific show from AEW. Uh, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, please tune in for more uh, on AEW, WWE, I mean, just wrestling in general. I'll try and keep you guys up to date. Please let me know what you think down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Follow me on the gram. Same name. It's Culture News Media on Instagram. Same logo. Uh, shout out to Fiverr for the killer intro. I tweaked it a little bit, but I made it work. Uh, please let me know what you guys think. And as the great Ric Flair once said, jumping on is a lot easier than jumping off. So please jump on to this channel. See you later.